I'm taking a walk along the hedgerow um, to do some identification of berries and to discuss what's edible and what's not. I'm not a herbalist and I'm not a botanist and I'm not a doctor so please do your own research before identifying and eating anything. I'm visiting this hedge on a rainy day and also a sunny day so that it can be seen in its different lights and just different character and although I love walking in the rain and seeing the dripping from the berries and everything made very shiny if we're collecting berries for eating making into whatever tasty recipes we have waiting um, it's best to harvest them on a dry day and they're less likely to be going mouldy sooner <laughs> so yeah a sunny day like today it's a good day for coming out and harvesting Okay, here we've got a really lovely one that climbs. It likes scrambling through the hedge. It's a climber and it just clambers over the ivy and the hawthorn and whatever else is growing there. And it's very distinctive because it has these heart-shaped leaves and it's called black bryony. And although it looks very similar in the way that it climbs to a different plant called white bryony. Black bryony is a member of the yam family, but the berries are toxic, so we can't eat them. They remind me of a string of Christmas lights. Here we've got an example of white bryony. And the difference is, although it's on these like streamers, the same as black bryony, or similar red berries, um, you can tell the difference because the leaves are not heart-shaped. They've got these five lobed leaves. And also it has little tendrils. This one's looking a bit dead and dried up, so you can't see it so clearly, but you can see these little wispy tendrils. They're sometimes like little tight corkscrews. There's one there, little tight corkscrew <laughs> of a tendril. Um, and it's, this one is part of the cucumber family, but again, the berries are toxic and we can't eat them. Or if we did, it would be a very explosive, laxative, unscrupulous traders um, used to dig up the roots of it and sell it off as mandrake root because that had healing properties and this doesn't. And so a lot of people in the past were probably made really ill. Best left, left for the birds, the wildlife. So just to confuse things a bit with um, another plant that looks very similar to black bryony and white bryony because it's climbing, scrambling through the hedge is woody nightshade which has three lobed leaves and also red berries. It seems to have more branching stems rather than a single trailing garland but they could appear very similar. So I just love the hawthorn. It's one of my very favourite trees. It's been used from ancient times as a tonic for the heart. It's used in heart medications by herbalists. Um, cardiovascular system it can be very effective for. And full of flavonoids, antioxidants, vitamins, B and C. It's a real nutritious one. And you can make jellies and wine and syrups. You can eat the young leaves in the springtime. If you eat the haws straight, they may give you a bit of stomach ache. So probably best to process them in some way first um, and not eat the seeds. Generally, leaves, flowers, berries are all edible. It's just a really ancient feeling tree and is found in many sacred sites considered a holy tree. This is an elder tree here, another favourite ancient part of our landscape used for millennia for medicines here. The berries are really rich in vitamin C and they make great syrups, great for the immune system, great for bronchial conditions and I can always identify them by the leaf 
grows in a formation of four leaves to the side and then one coming out on the end and also if you rub them you just squeeze them rub them with your hands it's a kind of really strong quite unpleasant smell and that's another identifying feature Here's an ancient woodland tree, the spindle, and it's a great one for wildlife and it has these lovely little berries. They're not fully opened up yet, sort of rosy, orangey red. And it's called the spindle because the wood of this tree used to be used to make spindles for spinning wool and other things too, knitting needles and pegs. And um, today it's used for artists' charcoal. We can't eat the berries, they're going to be quite toxic although they used to be ground up, powdered, to treat head lice in the past. As it matures, those pink parts of the berry are going to open up and reveal orange, the orange berries inside. And here's one I opened earlier. <laughs> it's a bit early in the season, um, but each of the four quarters are going to have a, an orange berry like that, and it will be open on the tree and visible. The ivy is really common, um, it's all the way along this hedgerow. So these ivy berries are very green and young at the moment, not fully formed into berries at all. They're just on their way to growing into berries and they will of course be black and shiny once they're grown and a great food for the birds during the winter. They're so important for the birds because they ripen later in the year and so they're a food source available for birds really late into the winter after a lot of the other berries have gone. The bees and butterflies are really loving the ivy at this time of year. Apparently a couple of species of ivy berries can be edible, but I have no idea which one, so I wouldn't eat any. Although we don't eat the berries, the leaves have a lot of medical uses, especially for the respiratory system, and they make a really effective cough syrup. We've got a lovely holly tree, already quite full of berries. We can't eat the holly berries, and they're toxic to dogs and cats too, so we have to be a bit careful when decorating our homes with them in the winter. And it's a female holly tree, because it's only the females that have the berries unless they don't have the berries because of some extreme weather. Sometimes if it's been too hot and too dry, they just drop the flowers and don't form the berries later. Or if there's no male trees around to have um, mated with. It's not really a botanical term, is it? <laughs> well, we've got some blackthorn here, which people who make slow gin may be quite familiar with. Got some lovely big round slows growing on here now might not be gin, might be jelly that you want to make or syrup maybe um, and if you don't want to be pricking them all uh, you can save the trouble by just freezing it for 24 hours and that does has the same effect of making it a bit more permeable to the alcohol coming in if it's gin you're making. You can tell the slow because they have the kind of white powdery matte effect on a kind of blue purpley fruit And they're very bitter, astringent if you tried to eat it straight raw off the bush. The snowberry isn't a native plant, originates from North America. Um, it's in the honeysuckle family, but we can't eat the fruit. Although I have read a few articles online where people have said they, they have, but generally they're considered toxic. They're quite high in saponins, which can be useful for making it to soap. Um, but they are really useful winter food for the birds as well, so they're probably best left on the trees for the birds. This fruit doesn't need any introduction. I think most people are familiar with the bramble and the blackberry, making pies and jams and loads just here. I've got lots of memories of blackberry picking after school with my mum 
They're such a healthy belly, full of vitamins and minerals, high in vitamin C, loads of antioxidants. So many health benefits of eating the wild berries and the leaves. Blackberry leaf tea. This is the white bean, which is related to the rowan. It's got silvery underside to the leaves and um, darker on top. And it's got these clusters of little berries here. The berries are edible and we can make jams and jellies from them and also they can be eaten raw. These do look a little bit like they're rotting a bit, a little bit mouldy, not such great health. So I'm not sure I would be wanting to eat those. Um, higher up in the tree, they look a lot more healthy up there, but they're far beyond my reach, so they're going to be safe for, for the birds to feast on. Here's lots of red rose hips growing on the wild rose, usually the dog rose, although there's a few different species, but I think this is the dog rose. Rose hips are high in vitamin C. They've been used as food and medicinally since ancient times. There's lots of old recipes for jams and jellies and syrup, and they can be eaten raw, but it's hard to avoid the tiny hairs that are inside the fruit, which are an irritant. Apparently they're best after a frost, but we can mimic that by putting them in the freezer first before we use them and it's supposed to improve the flavour. Something I love about the rose hips is that um, there's not a sense of rush because they're growing right through till January. It can feel a bit panicked that, oh, the blackberry season is going to be over quickly, need to rush out. Um, we can take our time with rose hip and know that it's there for us to be harvesting right through the winter. We've got some yew coming through the hedge here too huge tree above us. <laughs> the only part of the yew tree that isn't toxic is the fleshy part of the berry but it's a bit risky to try and eat that because the seed inside it is extremely poisonous and can cause death very quickly. Definitely best left for the birds. There's a poisonous alkaloid inside these needles of the leaves which is extracted and made into a chemotherapy drug to stop new cancer cells forming so it's extremely healing properties in this tree too. It can be difficult telling the difference between dogwood and buckthorn. There's dogwood, older buckthorn and purging buckthorn all have a very similar appearance and none of the berries are edible on any of them so at least we can be clear about that. I'm going with dogwood for this one as it has smooth edged leaves the purging buckthorn has a finely serrated edge to the leaves and the leaves on this one are growing opposite each other with veins curving to the tip. Also some of the stems and leaves are turning red which is more of a dogwood feature. They've all got black shiny berries um, and otherwise yeah look quite similar. It's got some flowers out now which is really unusual because they should have ended in June, July. Yes, yeah, something's gone a bit weird with the season here. Dogwood berries are high in antioxidants and birds like them, though if we ate them they're likely to make us sick. Buckthorn berries were used as a laxative in the past but even birds and animals only eat them as a last resort and they sometimes get ill from them too. Dogwood can sometimes have white berries, also not edible. There's an oak tree here in the hedge and although it doesn't have berries and the acorns aren't out yet it has these little discs like little ring donuts on the underside of the leaves. We can't eat them but I thought they were still a bit interesting to notice. They don't usually cause any long-term damage. Each one has a tiny wasp inside which has been maturing from a larva. They're called silk button spangle galls which I think is such a great name, and will drop with the leaves, but the wasp will stay inside through the winter until coming out in the springtime. Ah, oh, it doesn't have berries, but this is a really lovely little ash tree here. I've always liked the ash tree because you can always identify it so easily from these little tips, the little black tips on the ends of the branches, which are I like ash, I suppose. <laughs>
I want to celebrate the ash tree in this time when its future is endangered by disease. It's got such an amazing legacy of food and medicine, magical, mythical presence in our culture. And although so many parts of it are edible, the young shoots, leaves, seeds and sap, we need to forage with respect to its endangered status and maybe plant the seeds instead of eating them. And we've got old man's beard here, Clematis, Traveller's Joy, um, clambering all through the hedge, it's a climber. It hasn't got berries that we can eat, but it's an old friend, so I've stopped to say hello. Old man's beard. It's hazel trees all the way along this hedge, um, with these little catkins, um, which are going to be turning into hazelnuts later in the season. And I'm pretty sure this is hazel, um, but I'm going to come back later on and check whether there's been any nuts. Of course, there'll be quite a few berries I've missed because we can't have all the berries in the one hedge. That would be a lot to ask for, but we've certainly got plenty here. Enough to make lots of jellies and jams and wines and gin and <laughs> herb teas. There's ones that I haven't found here, like the Rowan, which has lovely berries this time of year. I'm on the lookout for that. And I wanted to include the Rowan because it's a well-established ancient tree, native in this country. Although the berries can't be eaten raw, they can be processed and the toxic elements are lessened then or disappear um, in jams and jellies. There's another plant, another tree that you might find in the hedgerow, which I didn't find in my hedgerow, um, but I wanted to include it just because it might be spotted and it has red berries. Um, it's the Gelder Rose and the berries are edible uh, so I come round to my dad's garden because he's got one in the garden and this is the leaf, bit of a windy day but that's the shape of the leaf for identification. There's the berries, they usually grow in little clusters and are quite bright and translucent almost. The leaves go very red, you can see the red in them now. I'm not going to try and tell you what these are, I don't know my mushrooms, but thanks for joining my autumn walk and happy foraging. There's so much here, it's really abundant. I think it's definitely my favourite time of year.